Hey guys, it's Lane and Blake from Refine Horizons, and this is another video I'm doing in my set of videos that shows you how we put together a resolved boundary drawing here at Redefine Horizons. And uh, this is a project that we're working on. Uh, it's a little pasture and a little home site in uh, south of Manteca on the Stanislaus River. So and it's partially complete, so we do have some monuments annotated and we've got some bearings and distance labels. Uh, we don't have all of them, but we have some of them. <laughs> but this needs to get cleaned up. We're missing some labels. There's there's no labels on the curve down here. And then we didn't label any of this line work up, this connecting line work up here on the north. So, and I apologize for the flickering a little bit. Um, Cat Software does not like uh, the screen recording. So there might be a little bit of flickering. I, I don't have a way around that, I don't think. So the, the first thing I'm going to do here, I've, I've got my, this is line work is actually X-Reft into my drawing. That's how we do it here. And uh, But I want to turn off these points. So let's go ahead and do that. And uh, you guys will have to bear with me here because I'm, oop, it's not what I want. I am uh, learning in Telecat as I go here. So on our line work layer, we've got a points. This probably this points control is turned on. Oop, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to freeze all the points layers because right now I don't need to see any of them. That's a little better. Okay, and then we want to go ahead and add. Uh, we'll we'll start with these line labels. We'll add the missing line labels here. So to do that, we're going to go to annotate, and uh, we want to annotate an angle and distance. And I want my bearing and distance on the same line. So we got to look for that option here. Uh, so right here above the line, bearing and distance. And we'll click that. You can see it drops in at the right scale. And it also adds these um, crow's feet, which is what I want. Okay, so pretty simple there if you have your label set up. I've got one there, got one here. Okay, but I'm missing some here, so let's go ahead and label these lines. So we're just going to go in and label these ones that we're missing. And I'm going to show you those actually need to get modified a little bit. We've got some other information to add to them. So we'll go back and do that in a sec. Okay, so I've got all the lines labeled. Now there's a couple of these that are where I had the, the labels are in place, but we're missing the crow's feet. So let's let me show you how to add those. So if you go to Anno, draw endpoint leaders. And we're going to say, we'll do all these above the line. So that was missing them. Uh, let's see. That was missing. These are missing them too, but they're below the line. So we can just do that, drive point leaders below the line. And we can grab those couple. Okay, so now everything will have crow's feet on it. Okay. Oh, looks like I forgot a line here, so let's do that. Let's add that bearing and distance. Okay, so I think I've got all the lines done. I'm gonna go ahead and save my drawing now and then we'll we'll try some curves. And I don't know how this is gonna work, because I don't know if I have my curves set up in my settings yet in Carlson on this install, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna try it. We're gonna live dangerous. All right, guys. Sorry, I stumbled around on my curves a little bit there. So, uh, but we want to label these curves. Uh, so let me show you just uh, a couple quick things. Uh, one is, uh, so when I when I first tried to do this, my curves were coming out with uh, too many decimal, too many digits right of the decimal on the arc length and distance. So to fix that, uh, you want to go to. Um, now I'm trying to remember where I was at. Oh, so if you go to label arc, hit this options right here, and then you can pick your dist your uh, number of distance uh, decimals for the distance digits for the decimal <laughs> digits right of the decimal for your arc length and your radius. So I just want to right there, okay. And then uh, when you tag your curve, um, now I've got a, a nice looking label to the nearest hundredth, which is what I want. So I got one more down here. 
Now let, let me show you something just real quick. Um, so I trace this arc and I want to tell you why. So uh, sometimes your your curve label won't fit, and so then you want to use this uh, you want to use this stack label, which will create a leader. Um, but it doesn't work. You see how it's trying to draw a leader way off the screen? That's because this is part of an XREF, so it just doesn't work good when that's an XREF. So if you need to do a, a dragged label like that on an arc, you got to trace your arc <clears throat> into your actual drawing, and then uh, once you do that. Now it'll give you a stacked label uh, correctly, okay? And uh, I haven't figured out yet how to change these settings, so uh, we'll we'll hit up Carlson Tech Support on that. So you got to edit those prefixes if you don't like the defaults. Um, and so uh, that that's how you can get a dragged out uh, curve label. Uh, it's just it's buggy; it won't do it with an XREF. So just a heads up, but. Um, and then if, in, at my shop, if you're going to do that, you got to put this arc on a special layer that's non-plottable uh, that we call survey boundary line for labels. And so uh, the label will plot, but this layer doesn't plot, so you don't get uh, double line works. Uh, sometimes that can cause pr uh, plotting problems. But uh, it will fit in this case, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. I just wanted to show you guys how to do that. And we'll just uh, we'll label it the regular way. Okay, so there you go. There's my label. All right, so the other thing I want to do um, is you'll notice uh, most of these bearings and distances have uh, the uh, type of distance and the reference. So this is a calculated distance from R3. Okay, but uh, these labels we just added do not. So let me just show you how to fix that. It's really easy. Just double click on this. Okay, and in this case, these are all going to be measured distances down here on our subject parcel because we, we've we got monuments. So they're all measured in R3. So you, you do want to make sure that you indicate the, the distance type and reference if applicable for all your line labels in the boundary anode drawing. Okay, so those are all good. This one I know, nope, that one has them. Okay, that's a calculated because we didn't have a measured on the other end. Um, and you know what? We should actually do that too on our curve. So let's redo this curve. So we're going to label the arc. We're going to go to options. That's okay. Oop. So on on the suffix here for the length, uh, we want to put. We're going to put uh, that particular one as a calculate. Uh, you know what, we're holding R3 for that, so we're going to put R3 on there. Cool, and now it gave me the R3 for the for the curve. Okay, so uh, then over here, it's a little bit different because we're moving off our subject parcel now. Um, so these are all going to be... Um, these are all going to be... Uh, we're holding record on all these, and I believe we want R4. I will double check that. R4 is the old subdivision map. So we're just going to go in and add R4 to all these. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to pause the video so you guys don't have to watch that. All right, guys. So I've gone in and I've added the uh, the references to all these distances. We held the record for the original subdivision map. Okay, so we're, uh, we're we're in a lot better shape. There's a, a couple other things that we want to do here. I want to add some dimensions to the road. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. I got to remember how to do that here in Carlson. I think it's on this menu here. No, nope, maybe it's not. Let's try. Let's try dimension. Good thing I know those old commands, huh? So the way I like to do my road dimensions is like this. I like to do a couple half widths. Okay, 
and then uh, then I do usually do one overall. Okay, and there's one uh, one important thing that we're going to show here. So those are our two half widths. Then we'll do an overall. So if you can't see me, I'm just grabbing nearest and then going perpendicular. Okay, now on this one, I want to put the record reference for the road width. And if we don't have that, we should indicate why. Uh, but this is actually going to be per the, uh, the old submap. So it was dedicated on the old submap. So we're going to put 60 feet R4. And then uh, I should have set my current layer, and I didn't. So let's uh, get these on the right layer. Okay, And then uh, we're going to come up and just do that up here again. We'll get on the right layer this time. So we're going to do our couple of half width labels. Then we'll do our full width. And again, uh, we want to put on our uh, we want to put on our R four. Notice that did not work. So let's see if we can fix that. I also noticed that these have too many decimal places. I, I like to show my roads to the nearest foot. So let's go fix that. So, and I also want these to be a tenth high. So precision, we're gonna put to a foot. And that looks good there. And then right here, we're gonna add a suffix. So under text, Nope, it's not under text. Where is it at? Uh, dim suffix after the foot symbol. We're going to add that record reference R4. Okay, those look a little better. Uh, then we'll just match properties on these. Let's go fix these ones down here. And these will probably fit inside. Let's see if we can get them inside. Hmm. It's not letting me do that. Uh, okay, so I'm going to live with that. That's interesting. That won't let me do that. All right, so we got some dims on. The other thing I wanted to do, and we'll be just about done here, is um, I wanted to. Uh, we got we found some other monuments that don't have notes. So you can see down here we've we've got these monument notes, but we need to. We need to add the symbol in the notes for this area in the north. So to do that, I got to turn my points back on. So let's go ahead and uh, turn on our point layers again, and that's in the X ref. So it should be this layer here, points property corners. Um, so you can see we found a monument here, but there's no symbol, and we don't have the uh, the monument number. So we're gonna fix that. We're gonna say M. 126 okay and then we'll go copy that symbol found one here and then I think yep we found a pipe up here and then I can't remember if we found yep we found an iron bar and we found a three-quarter inch iron pipe there so we did we did pretty good okay now after we drop those symbols you notice we got to move our leaders so they don't get covered up so uh, this has got to get I'm gonna just well, let me pull this up Hmm. 
might be having a hard time switching CAD software there. That might be why I'm having some trouble tweaking these dimensions and in liters. But so we'll just uh, pull these out. Oop. We're just gonna. So I'm just pulling them out. Oop. So that uh, the liter arrowhead doesn't get buried in the in the symbol. I'm also going to. I notice these arrowheads look too big. So let's select similar. And let's check our leader arrowhead size. Yeah, arrow size should be 0.1, should be 0 0.05, and then we should set the scale on here. So I'm at a 50 scale, I believe. Whoop. We got to fix our text height, obviously. didn't like that so that was just a I'm gonna undo that I'll fix that in my other CAD software we're just a little buggy because we're switching between CAD software okay so I'm gonna go ahead and copy these up and these uh, M leaders up because we've got to label these I'll get that arrow in the right spot here in BricsCAD. It's having a hard time in Carlson. So that's M517, and that is also a uh, found three quarter inch pipe. And then we're going to move this up here. We found an iron bar, one inch. Well, that's M105. So that's a found inch, sorry, found one inch iron bar. And then we got one more up here. This is uh, M116. It's a found three-quarter inch iron pipe. Okay, and hopefully when I get into BricsCAD, I can fix these uh, multi-liters. So we'll look at that in a sec. Okay, so that's about uh, where we want our boundary anode drawing. So what I want to do now is I want to go in and detach my line work now that I'm done with it. All right, and uh, we're going to throw a save down on this bad boy. And then let's open it. Let's open that drawing up in BricsCAD and see if we can fix those uh, leaders real quick. All right. So we're going to go open that drawing in BricsCAD. And uh, we'll see if we can get those uh, M liters fixed. So before it wouldn't let me move these, yeah. So it's gonna let me move them now. And then uh, this is all; these are messed up because they're they should be at uh, the scale should be set to 50. The overall scale. So let me show you guys how to fix that real quick. So the overall scale here should be 50, and then you got to go in and adjust these. So I like my landing gap to be 0 0.05. I like my text height to be 0 0.1. Uh, I like my arrow size to be 0 0.1. I like my landing distance to be 0 0.05. All right, and then uh, it's throwing the text way out there, so we're just going to pull these back in. Okay, so let's see what happens now when we do a match props. Hold on to your seatbelt. Oh, cool. So when we do that, it doesn't completely blow up, uh, which is good. So then we're just going to pull these over here. So I like BricsCAD a little better than the IntelliCAD engine. 
which is what Carlson runs on. So we're just gonna fix all these because the arrowheads were too big. The other thing that it was uh, having a hard time with was uh, was having a hard time with these uh, dimensions here. Let's see if it'll let me tweak them in here. Yeah, it will. So I wanted to move these inside. So there's just some issues going between Carlson and Brickscad, which is all right. I'm gonna leave that one out. So it's because it's gonna be over the center line. So okay, so I think I got this cleaned up. Uh, one good way to check is we're just gonna um, drop back, drop our uh, boundary line work drawing back in, and make sure that stuff lines up okay. And we'll send it to the back. So we'll select it, send it back, and uh, this looks good. Got to remember those points will be frozen. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. We got a we got a pretty decent boundary anno drawing. You know, we may add some notes in there, maybe some severe notes that go in here, but uh, so far I'm pretty happy with it. So we're gonna detach this, and then just to do good housekeeping, uh, we're gonna run a, a full purge. And we're gonna run an audit. So I fixed 10 errors, so that's good that we did that. And uh, we'll save this. I think we've got a good boundary anno drawing, so that was about twice as long as my normal video, but I appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. Thanks. Catch you on the next one.